All right, Twan Russell is going to join us. He's on the Toyota of Hollywood Hotline. Before we talk some Canes with Twan, reminder, if you're looking for the best Canes or Dolphins merchandise this season, check out Caneswear in Davie, University Drive next to La Spada's, or online at caneswear.com. Twan, of course, crowd, this is tradition, certainly for UMFSU Week. I mean, we talked to him throughout the year, but UMFSU Week, Twan joins us, and Gino Toretta joins us, and we like to celebrate the pageantry of this week. He played linebacker for the Hurricanes in the 90s, played a couple seasons linebacker for the Dolphins. You know the story if you listen to this show. The Russell Education Foundation does such great work helping the youth of South Florida. Antoine is the athletic director at St. Thomas Aquinas. But when it's UMFSU week, Twan is just a hurricane rooting for an ass kicking of those Florida State Seminoles. And that's the truth. And he's joining us now. Hello, Twan. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Am I right? Am I right? I think Crowder even. Will you acknowledge it's Crowder? Great. To You're be <laughs> a Miami Hurricane. Crowder, I just need somebody to join in with me. Crowder's an honorary cane this year. Tuan, they let me. They let me get in on the top five team this year. Tuan, are you okay with that? That they let me sneak in because my Gators are getting the hell beat out of them weekly. I think the world of you can join whatever team I'm on. <laughs> any, any any team I'm on, you more than welcome to join. I'm all in with Crowder. <laughs> so here's, here's except for except for when we play those Gators. Other than that, I'm all in. Right. Well, well this yeah. year this year wasn't that hard, Twan. Goodness gracious, <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to say anything, but uh, we know. <laughs> so here, here's the thing, though, Twan. It's a great season, and they're undefeated. And Cam Ward looks like a possible Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, it really is going well. They're three touchdown favorites over FSU Saturday night. But you, being a longtime Hurricane player, fan, supporter, um, do you tell everyone, hey, slow your roll? Like, as bad as FSU has looked and as good as UM has looked, just slow your roll. It's a rivalry game. Anything can happen Saturday night. 100%. If, you, if you're not going into this game, understand it's a rivalry game. Something's wrong with your brain. I don't care what the record is of University of Miami is, and I don't care what the record is of Florida State. University of Miami and Florida State have played over 65 times, and right now it's 35 to 34. Miami's up by one game over the 65 or 66 times they've played in the history of University of Miami and, and Florida State going back and forth. I, the records don't matter. These, When you look at the rosters and you go team by team, player by player, these guys played Little League together. They played high school together. They did all the all-star games before they went to college. They played against each other in college. And these guys know each other. These are brothers playing against brothers. These are friends playing against friends. And when you put your hands in the dirt, it's less about, you know, what's going to happen in the nation. It's about who owns the state of Florida. And every time I think of the University of Miami and uh, Florida State game, I think about Michael Barrow Ooh. knocking the crap. <laughs> out of, I forget the wide receiver's name from Florida State, but it's, mm. whenever you Google University of Miami and Florida State rivalry, you have a you have a, 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 a FSU uh, wide receiver on his back. I want I think it was Tamark Vanover. I'm not 100 percent sure, but you see his mouthpiece flying out, sweat coming off his face. Mike has the meanest, ugliest face in the world, and he's driving him into the ground, and it doesn't look like football. It looks like violence because that's what happens. When you compete against somebody you know and that you – and these guys love each other. They know each other. You're going to see hard-hitting, fast-playing football. It's not about the records. It's about owning the state of Florida, and we've been battling over 66 times. And I promise you, University of Miami wants to make sure they walk off that field and have won 36 and not 35 times. It was and, Tameric Vanover, by the way. That's who we're thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. And Barrow, Barrow was a bad man back then. I've seen that hit a hundred times. The, yeah. Bu the Bermuda Triangle. We had Michael Barrow, Jesse Armstead, and um, Darren Smith. The baddest linebacker trio, arguably, in in the world. And when you look at the what they've done in their career, they have over, almost 40 years of NFL experience between the three of them. They all played together. They're probably three of the baddest football players that played together as a unit to go on to the National Football League than anybody else in football. 
Whew. My first thing popped in my mind was That's Vilma and DJ. To. Vilma and DJ popped in my mind, but they didn't have that third. I think you're right. <laughs> Some bad men. <laughs> Twan, and this is, you know, I, I'm, you know, we're both defensive guys. We both play the same damn position. That I don't want to. I don't want to say what's the problem. I want to say how do we fix it? Because VTech, Cal, and Louisville all had. If you average it, it's over 400 yards of offense. And then Cam Ward goes out there in the fourth quarter and drops 21, and we're good to go. How do we fix that when the I, the defensive back struggle? Do you send more pressure so they don't have to cover as long? Do you play more zone because they have help? How do we fix this secondary? Well, we're young in the secondary. When you look at the guys that are playing, I mean, we have a couple guys that have transferred in. We're young in the secondary. We we have some challenges in that place. Now, we're fixing it because of D-line. We're fixing it because how much we blitz. We we have to be careful because if you blitz too much, now you're putting your, your, your corners and your safeties on an island. Now they're in zero covers playing one-on-one. So it's a, they, they're trying to mix it up. I'll tell you, the MVP of all of this is the um, defensive coordinator. He is pulling it out because they – I mean – our defensive line, I think, is very talented. But when you start getting into our the pass portion of it, we have struggled. And I think he's working with that. And you know what? We all know if you can play complementary football, you can win. And that's what Miami's doing. The defense is playing well enough, and the offense is figuring it out. I mean, I've never seen a quarterback in my life, and maybe I'm biased because he has that, that orange and green on, but I've never seen a guy that goes, that takes the snap, takes three drops, I mean, um, drops back three steps, take out a coffee maker, pours a cup of coffee, puts some sugar in and stirs around a little bit, takes a sip, puts his pinky up, scans the field. Hey, mama, I think I'm going to throw it over to the left. Throws it to the left. The guy catches it and goes run for 20 yards or a touchdown. I've just never seen some guy, somebody look so calm and so cool. It almost looks like he's not trying. But him not trying is faster and better than Everybody else on the field, he's playing in slow motion. He's he sees the field in slow motion. Everybody else sees it when you like fast forward it through a reel. Everybody else is fast forward, and he's playing in slow motion. It's almost like he has a superpower, and we don't know it. But he's been masterful. He is literally the reason why the University of Miami has won the last seven games, and it's been fun to watch. I have not. I mean, literally, um, who were we playing? Uh, what was it? Cow. And nobody was in my house. My wife's up in, um, you know, uh, Tennessee with my son. I didn't go to that game. I'm running around the house by myself. I mean, and, you know, it was in the middle of the night. It's like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm running the house, high-fiving. The dogs is jumping up on me because I'm jumping up by myself. It was the best experience I've ever had in my life by myself. And I'm rooting for my Canes. I, and honestly, I hope we bring all the smoke this weekend for the state. They deserve everything we get. And I hope we don't come off the um, gas pedal, but we can't go into that game thinking, oh, we're up, you know, we've won you know, seven games. We have to walk into that game understanding that we're going to play the toughest opponent that we're going to play all year because they're playing for pride, too. When a man's playing for pride, he's a dangerous man. And we have to go in there and break their wheel right off the bat. Juan jumped into that koi pond after that cow game. He didn't know how to celebrate. Dude. Hey, hey. <laughs> Dirt that, off that right in the koi idea. pond. That's a great <laughs> idea. I'm getting in the koi pond. I never thought about that. Oh, my God. You oh, might, hurt, me. You might hurt Beatrice. You what if you land on Beatrice? <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Yo, but you know I'm what? Jump, you, I'm you, you mentioned Cam Ward, and, and it really is – It's it's like – you watch him. Everything you said is so right on. There are a lot of quarterbacks who can extend a play. We've seen this over and over and over again. The way he does it so casually, and I'm sure it only appears casually, but it does appear like he is never feeling any mm -hmm. kind of pressure to hurry a throw. And again, he throws picks, so he obviously does. But his demeanor is so relaxed. I wonder if is like for me, I, I I watch it and I marvel. I think it's great. I wonder if it could be taken as a detriment instead of a positive where they go, hey, you need to feel more pressure back there. I, I don't I don't think so, because imagine how the offensive quarterback feels when Cam Ward walks to the sideline. And he goes, hey, coach, I threw a pick. This is what I saw. I thought I could do this. He ran a little faster than I thought. And I tried to lob it over, but then he reacted. 
not a big deal. I won't do it again. I'll throw a pick. I'm going to go down a drive. I mean, that's how it, the conversation looks when he's talking to the offensive coordinator. The offensive coordinator almost looks like the student. And they're they're having a real debate. Like sometimes I see him talk on the sideline that he's saying, "Hey, yeah, that's not yeah, absolutely. I like no, no, I don't like that. No, I don't like that." I mean, during the Cal game, they called the timeout and they were debating very, like almost like um, businessmen partners. They were debating on what they wanted to throw. He says, "No, nah, not that throw. I like this one." He's like, "No, nah, not that one because of this." And they were going back and forth. And I think that's what has allowed that offense to be so successful because the guy that's throwing the ball has as much input as the guy that's calling the plays and creating a game plan. And they have great respect for one another. And and he earned that respect because the way he plays the game, he's highly knowledgeable. He understands the game at the same level, I think, that the coaches understand it. He's communicating with them in a the high level. And I wonder as we go through this NIL and you see more of these guys say, hey, you know what, instead of me going to the league, let me stay in college one more year. Now you're getting a high-level, intelligent man staying in college, leading younger men, and I think that's what he's done. I think he walked when he walked in the room. He's been through the process. He's been through the fire. He's gone through it all. He was ready to go to the National Football League. He came back to the University of Miami. So really, we almost have like an NFL quarterback guiding our guys, um, hopefully to a national championship. And Tuan, some we've talked about it a lot. But the same thing you're saying interception or touchdown he doesn't get excited and start you know throwing mm-hmm. his helmet and slapping it those interception he doesn't throw his helmet against the wall he goes Twan, i've watched it i've watched it number again he either goes and talks to a coach gets the ipad or gets on the phone to figure out what he did good or bad i don't want to say no emotion because i know he wants to win but to your point it's a very mature way of approaching it and i love that Twan. but is this i want to change gears a little bit with that is this what we were waiting for with uh, 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 Mario Cristobal? Because the trenches seem like they're getting back to legit trenches. That's why I said I don't question the front four, the front the front seven, and you're right, the linebackers can't cover that great, but this front four and this offensive line looks like what I played against when I was at Florida playing Miami. It's looking more like University of Miami football. I'm not, I'm, they're doing it differently. I mean, they're doing it very differently. And when you look at those great teams in the past – in the 90s and the 2000s, those teams were, you know, it was it was defense first. It, it was shutting your opponent down to, you know, less than 15 points. Now we're in shootouts. We've never, I, I don't remember having so many shootouts in the season. But you know what? We have to we have to remake ourselves. The games, the game has changed. I mean, when you watch college football across the board, with the way the transfer portal has changed football, the parity in in, in college football is very tight like it, you, there's there's not a lot of difference between you know 25 and number one so just like the national football league the guy that wins um the, the team that wins in, uh the the super bowl they've had probably you know 10 games where it was a three-point different game so i think you're going to see more of this in, in college football when those big teams play one another uh especially in the same conferences you're going to see very slim margins and the University of Miami is learning how to play the game a little bit different. Now, I do think that we're going to get to a place where our defense is going to catch up. I mean, we're very close, very close. And we have some young guys coming, especially in the secondary. Um, and I've, I've, I've talked to those guys, and they talk about the linebackers that are going to be coming in. And if they can figure out a way to keep that style of defensive line, that nasty, brutal – I mean, those guys are dogs with – you know, high level linebackers and, and, and corners. And we're going to be, it's going to be hard to be the University of Miami. I love what Mario has done. And, and I've been talking about it. every time I come on, I say, hey, guys, I got to get through year three. Mario is, this is what he's been talking about. And he needed some time to figure it out. He needed some time to put the pieces in place. Now, we haven't made it. We can't sit here and say we've done anything yet. We've only, we've only won seven games. But when you look at what, we have gone through for the last 20 years, man, this looks more like what we were thinking. Now we're getting there differently. I mean, we're going through shootouts. I would love to see the defense step up, but they're going to get there. And I think we're going to see some exciting football starting with Florida state this weekend. Um, and I, I think we got number six, Miami, you know, going to play a, a, a Florida state that's, you know, having those challenges, but we're going to walk in there, man, with all the piss and vinegar we can bring to the table and play real cane football.
I think it's number five too. I don't think you want to short us one spot on the. Uh, oh, we 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 five. Man. Am I shorting us? I well, think you are. Aren't they number we, five, Solana? I don't believe so. I think they uh it's, they stood pat at six, Hawk. Yeah, but there's AP. Okay. There's different ones because I said five earlier, but there's different rankings. So I think it's six on the AP. Well, I mean, oh, no. hey, we we in the we in the hunt. We in the conversation. I mean, if 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 the if the playoffs started right now, we got. No, they are six on the AP. That's all I know. Huh. Man, that right. anti Miami bias is still out there. It's ridiculous. Wait, you got these one loss that. SEC teams and they're ahead of Miami. It's ridiculous, Dwan. Hey, hey, hey. Well, let's talk about that. Have you seen I have not seen this much venom to um um at the University of Miami in a long time. They walk into these these hostile environments and they are cussing and yelling and and saying the foulest things to the University of Miami. I feel like we're at home again. Like, we're back, this baby. Is what they used to do to us. Like <laughs> Everybody loves to hate Miami. I love it. <laughs> Twan, y'all ain't putting up 40 against Alabama, Georgia, or Tennessee now, Twan. I'm going to warn you now. Well, we I'm gonna... Oh, here comes that this SEC gusto oh, so where like, it's they line completely up misplaced. Football. Completely misplaced crowd. I mean, you can't, are we you about can't have that. We're talking about Alabama. Alabama got two losses on their schedule. Was it the Georgia and Tennessee? We just beat each other up. Uh-huh. <laughs> just, hey, you, just, you, just, you just misery loves comfort you just trying to find a way to pull me down into the no, didn't Alabama That's Alabama right. didn't lose to Georgia and Tennessee to Tennessee and I don't it, was, know. it was like Ooh, Vanderbilt or something Vanderbilt and Tennessee this past Ooh, I didn't want to throw it out of that my son went up there you know they went up there and put their hands on him <laughs> <laughs> I know I know we got to go to one so you got a koi pond and a bunch of dogs. Are you Doctor Doolittle? How many? You have any other pets? I got. I have seventy koi, seven um, turtles, and two uh, uh, standard poodles. And a partridge in a pear tree. Of, um, squirrels yeah. and stuff running around the yard. Twan, if you just want to <laughs> feed somebody, I got three kids. If you want to shoot me a check or something. <laughs> Check out hey, the man, your kids like you. I don't want to do that. <laughs> check out the Russell Education <laughs> Foundation online. They've got their second annual Rally for Reading Pickleball tournament coming up. And I know Solana, that speaks to you. Loves himself some pickleball. Are you uh are you gonna participate again, Twan? Yeah, I'm gonna put these bad knees to work. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get I'm gonna get it going. <laughs> Stolana could say the same thing. Unfortunately, he's only 30. But he's going to put his bad knees to work as well. Uh, Twan Russell, we love having you on, especially UMFSU week. And I hope that it is a uh, a master class this Saturday night by Mario, Cam, and the rest of the Hurricanes. That would be fun. And we will speak with you as the season progresses. Thank you, Twan. All right, I'll see everybody in the Koi, koi Pond. I'm jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> Mark down Twan's house for Halloween. It's coming up soon, man. He's got the Koi Pond out front. He's probably giving out the full-size candy bars. <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's feeding 77 animals. Huh? I, I actually <laughs> remember Twan telling us that he turns the lights off. Like He doesn't I even turn like the to light off like, and yeah. close the gate. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. Yes, See sir. you, Twan. There you go. Twan Russell.